What's your name? Jabbar. Jabbar. Any special message? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm working with my granddaughter on this one. Oh, really? Yeah, so I think Good. that's why I'm really interested. So. There you go, okay? Thank you. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. What's your name? Uh, yeah. Oh, it's my honor. Thank you for coming out. Please, let me know if I can give any more help, okay? Yeah, God bless you. Yes, Karen, how are you? It's good to see you. Well, I'm good to see you. Doing okay? Good. I'm so blessed to be doing something I love. She had diabetes. And you kept it off. Uh -huh. She's doing wonderful. Congratulations. Yes. Are you all perfect? Yes. Brilliant. Good. Keep up your work. Okay? Take care. Everybody, I uh, know that there's a lot of enthusiasm for the most talked about weight loss coach uh, in the country today. In fact, former President Bill Clinton is among those who have endorsed the new book, Think and Grow Thin, which is a diet regimen taken and enjoyed by people including U.S. Senator Claire McCaskill, our own Mike Kelly of KMOX Radio, and I know many people in our listening audience. So much for what I have to say. Why don't we welcome the author of the January Fontbonne University Book Club, Charles D'Angelo. <laughs> Give it up, St. Louis. Hey, Charles, thanks for joining us today. How you doing, Charlie? Good. I suppose there's a little irony that we are enjoying uh, Kimmel's food while we are discussing your book. Was that some but type of joke? No. All about these, these foods that you know aren't part of the program. Well, no, but you can get, uh, let's say, and I was taking a look at the Kimmel's uh, menu earlier today. No, you today. can't, Charlie. No. Uh, no. no. <laughs> let, let, Charles, you get the salmon, grilled, no butter. Absolutely. And then you ask for steamed vegetables. There you go. All right. Now That's, we're talking. All right. Then we're, 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 in, th we're thinking of growing thin when we do that, right? We're going to get Charlie converted to a Team Charles program sooner or later. Hey, uh, I, I, I have read the book, and it's uh, very sound from what I know. Now, I'm not a nutritionist, but I do follow uh, nutrition through newsletters and books and, uh, you know, the general media. Uh, you, well, we'll get to some of your ideas in just a moment. But first, Bill Clinton, how did you get a president of the United States to endorse your book? Well, I've been very, very fortunate to help lots of people. When most people come to see me, I mean, if I can just get some applause from the audience here, how many people have come to see me after buying at least, <laughs> well, wow, after buying at least three diet books? Who here has bought at least three diet books? Good number. How about four? Four? Five? Okay, so when most people come to see me, there's no lack of what to do. And many of the people that I've helped mentioned you mentioned Claire McCaskill and others, know what to do, but they find it difficult to do what they know. I had the unique opportunity and privilege after losing 160 pounds as a teenager, I'd always admired President Clinton for all of his efforts in improving our nation. So when I had the chance to go and tell my story, he really identified with it because the Clinton Foundation, one of their tenets is really confronting the childhood obesity epidemic we're facing. 70% of children that are overweight or obese will grow up to be overweight adults. So he really saw value in my story of being an overweight bully teen, someone that was ostracized, made fun of, and he lended his name to my book. L let's talk about that because you were, although you're pretty buff with a six pack in uh, front of our radio audience today, you were 200 pounds in fourth grade and by the age of 17, 360 pounds. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had and a size 50 inch waist. I couldn't make it up a flight of just four stairs in high school. I would wake up in the middle of the night with a nosebleed often. I was sweating in a room that was nice and cool just like this. Things that were so simple for, sev so for everyone else my age were challenging for me. And I was pulling back from people because as a young person, I was always different than all the other young people my age. I was very empathetic. I always got along with adults when most kids were playing with other kids. I was talking to teachers or reading. So I was different than other kids. And when you're different, as a young person, you get made fun of. You pull back and your peers then interpret that as you're rejecting them. So as I pulled back, I got bullied worse and worse and I found my best friend, Ronald McDonald and <laughs> little Debbie and quickly, I ballooned up to 360 pounds by the time I was 17. 
I really felt desperate. I felt there was no way out. Speaking but through of God's uh, grace, I was able to change. You, you were bullied in school, uh, and your mom would take you after you came home from being bullied to McDonald's to get a happy meal. So many people today think that food is the answer. And in our culture, marketing has done so well by so many major corporations today that children associate a lot of pleasure mentally to eating these unhealthy foods. Uh, when I would go to a grocery store with just an empty cart as a child and my parents, and we would go through, hungry of course, we would fill that cart with every colored box that had a toy in it. Yeah. And come home, I remember, and my mom would look at me and my dad and say, you guys were hungry, right? <laughs> I mean, you would have so much stuff, and some of that's probably still sitting in the cabinets at my parents' house. The, the idea is, is that when you're a young person, it's very important to take control of the associations you're making. As a parent, those that are sitting out here in the audience today really need to help to give their children the information they need, to give their children the right example so that they don't make those unhealthy associations that later in life are going to have a negative consequence. Tell, especially to our uh, listeners who might be parents, tell them about your experience as a kid playing Duck, Duck, Goose. When I was, a, it was very unfortunate for me, uh, when I was such a young person, again, being different than all the other young boys, I was always really sensitive. I didn't really identify with kids. So we would have to go to gym class, right? And as kindergartners or first graders in gym class, you play these games which are supposed to socially involve everyone. The issue was, however, that the kids saw I was bigger than them, and they knew I was the slower one. And if you guys are familiar with the game Duck, Duck, Goose, the idea is as the kids get in a circle and you say, duck, 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 you tag the person this goose, and that person has to get up really quick and run around and try to tag that person. Well, I was always the slowest one. And unfortunately, those types of painful experiences at a young age caused me really to pull back and really not to want to be involved with kids at all. So I just withdrew and withdrew. And again, that only, only exacerbated the bullying I was experiencing because then kids thought, well, he thinks he's better than us. Quite the contrary. I, think, I thought I wasn't good enough because I was bigger. And again, then that fed, that addiction, that unhealthy eating, and that withdrawal from activity. And sooner than I knew it, I was totally outside of everyone else, physically, mentally, spiritually, and I had felt that I had lost all hope. I didn't know that I would live to see my high school graduation. By the time I was a mm. junior in high school, after all of those years of bad eating, my health was threatened. On the contrary, you turned your life around, and in four short years, you were in Cosmopolitan magazine, <laughs> Uh, and they described you as a shirtless sweetheart. <laughs> well, Charlie, I was 19 at that time. I did some silly things. Uh, so it was just two <laughs> years after. This was just two years Just after. two years after being 360 pounds, he was then featured in Cosmo for his body. And, and well, let me tell you this. That was quite an exciting experience at that point in my life. But more importantly, what was really exciting for me is to have the people that have come to see me since, young people that come in my office that are in tears and people, parents. I had just a, yesterday a gentleman come in who's an electrician. I won't name. But he came in because he has to work with his hands with wiring. And his children are overweight, and he must weigh about 310 pounds. And he came to see me because his doctor had said that he has type 2 diabetes. Uh, just by a show of hands or by some applause, if any of you here have type 2 diabetes, could you make some noise? Any of you? Could you? OK, it's such a prevalent disease today. And the problem with it is this. He came in, and now he's laid off. He's losing feeling in his fingertips because of diabetic neuropathy. And for him to come to me and say, Charles, because of your story, because of the transformation that I witnessed, seeing what you've done for my friends, what you've done for yourself, you're a living example of what's possible, that he found hope in himself to change. That's what keeps me going every single day. Because knowing that a person can do it by living examples is what gets me fired up every okay. single day. You open yourself up to the vulnerability of hunger. You're making yourself feel that you're going to fail when there's no reason to because you don't have a game plan. When you have a plan that's sound, which you can find in my book, it's very simple to adhere to the guidelines that you decide to adhere to. Uh, the book also includes a lot of brown rice and sautéed or steamed vegetables. Fruits, vegetables, lean meats, different protein sources. So if you're a vegetarian or vegan, you can choose those types of healthy options so that you can adhere to the program. Remember, guys, there's what I always 
compare this to a three-legged stool, right? You have one leg being the diet, which I have a very sound diet in the book. You have one leg being the exercise. I tell you exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it. But here's what's missing. And here's what is the link that holds it all together. How do you get yourself such that when you're eating the right foods, you're finding those healthy foods to be things you actually enjoy? How do you get to the place where you actually look forward to going to the gym? You know, with the advent of Facebook, I love it. Why? Because I can monitor all my clients in the comfort of my bedroom. <laughs> all I have to do is log on Facebook.com. I type in, uh, we're going to use Donna Smith. And look, oh, here's Donna. Or how about Jamie Johnson? Oh, here's Jamie. And here's what she's saying about her comments and about her exercise. Can't wait to go to the gym today. I can keep an eye on all of my clients that way. And we can interact. Having that team mentality as well, which is a good segue, having support is a very vital part of success. Yeah, we, we, we didn't mention this yet, but uh, your book, Think and Grow Thin, is one thing, but it's actually based on the experience you have training St. Louisans at your uh, office and studio in Webster. It's so funny. So many people don't know what to call me. They'll say, you know, uh, wow, Donna, you look so much different. What did you do? I went and saw Charles D'Angelo. Oh, is he a trainer? No, uh-uh. Uh, he's a doctor, isn't he? No, no. Uh, nutritionist. No, he's not that. What the hell is he? <laughs> what I do, I call myself a weight loss coach. So when a person comes to see me, we sit down and we go over what I call the three R's. We go over the results. What's going to get you charged up? What's going to get you fired up? What do you need to achieve so that you leave my office in three months feeling absolutely ecstatic? What are the things that you're excited about? Is it getting off a of medication? Is it being able to walk from your car to the curb without getting out of breath? It can be that simple. Is it being able to look at your son and daughter, knowing you're the best mother, the best father, that looking at your spouse, knowing that you're prolonging your life through your habits rather than decreasing the amount of years you have? What are the results you need? Second, what's the reason? And this is where a lot of folks fall short. They have a really compelling goal, but they don't have a reason for achieving it. They want to lose 50 pounds. And I ask why? For my high school reunion. Well, what about after my high school reunion? What about after that event? What are you going to do to keep yourself consistent after you have reached the goal? And that, therein lies the psychological principle that you were talking about earlier. Getting to a place where motivation is inherent, where you find what is required to be pleasurable. When you treat the things that have caused the pain in your life as a drug, when you look at those unhealthy foods and you fear them with respect, rather than long for them. Where you feel in control, you can go to a party, you can go to a social event, and you can maintain composure despite your peers. After that has been attained, and we've defined the reasons you want to do this, is it because you're worried about your future for your family? This gentleman yesterday I mentioned, the electrician, he broke down in tears in my office, a grown man. Now, I'm not saying that facetiously. I empathize with the man, because let's face it, if we want to be honest, the National Institute of Health now says that overweight and obesity is the second leading cause of preventable, listen to that word, preventable death in our culture. Second leading cause. Now, what does overweight and obesity cause from? Well, why disease? don't we no. hang tight, but uh, th thanks for that pithy response. To the question, <laughs> hang on, uh, Charles, uh, for joining us in the Q and A, which is more A than Q, but okay, <laughs> hang tight. I'll work on that, Charlie. I, I'm going to work I, on that. I, I think you can lose weight just by talking, because uh, <laughs> I think talking increases the metabolism or something. You know, I got to talk more so I can become a sweet. Do they need, uh, do they need any hosts at Camel X over there, Charlie? Uh, I'm, I'm noticing. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, folks don't know this, but uh, while he was talking, I went to the ATM and just came back. <laughs> Went to the kitchen, cooked up some cannelloni with Mark. Cannelloni. Okay, we're at Kimo's restaurant. You take a break. Let me take that thank microphone you. away from you. All right. Would you hold that for just a second? Okay, thanks a lot. Most dangerous place in the world, uh, the distance between a microphone and Charles D'Angelo, who has written the book Think and Grow Thin. Okay, we have quite a few questions for Mr. D'Angelo, so let's start with this one. Hello, your name and sign of the Zodiac. Oh, my name is <laughs> Geraldine, and my Zodiac is Aquarius. And my question is, you talked about morning losses. How do you... Morning what now? Losses. Morning losses? Morning losses. M -M like, okay, I understand. Yes. I understand what you're saying. How do you mourn the loss of food? I Chocolate think... cake, bread, 
Biscuits. Beer. Thank you. Yeah. Cheese, pizza. Exactly. I think that it comes from getting that third leg in place that is reinterpreting what those foods mean to you by properly looking at them. Much of your question is linked to the affect, the emotion. So part of it is associating pain to those things by looking at the consequences of indulging in such behavior. So is it okay to have a piece of cake celebratory? Fine on a design night in the program, which I designed in the program. But if you link too much pleasure to those things, if you long for them, achieving and maintaining your goal, in my opinion, is very, very challenging. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your question. Let's get another one. Actually, this fellow, a friend of mine, Bill Winfrey, is in the house. Uh, he lost how many pounds, Bill? 65. 65 pounds later. How difficult was it, Bill? It really was not a difficult uh, diet, Charlie. Um, He's I lying. Mean, <laughs> no, I think the big thing is, is and, and Charles is able to move this to you, is you stay focused. You get focused, you get into the diet, you get into an exercise regimen, uh, you eat the, the turkey, chicken, a lot of ve uh, green vegetables, uh, broccoli, those kinds of things, and just kind of decide that, that you're focused, you're going to stay with it and make it happen. Did, did you get irritable? Uh, no, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. And, and the, the amazing thing was um, I don't snore anymore at night. Um, I had problems with an L4 vertebrae. That problem's gone away completely. My blood pressure medicine is half of what I used to take, and I feel better than I've felt in years. If you stop listening to this show, you could probably lose the other half. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, Bill. 65 pounds later, what's left of them? Bill Winfrey. Congratulations. Hi, your comment or question? I'll hold it. Okay. I, I learned from this guy. Don't give up the mic. My name's Jamie. I'm one of Charles' clients, um, and I just wanted you to talk about tips to control urges during family celebrations? I think that goes back to having a strategy. So by having systemized times of eating and foods that are actually going to keep you feeling filled, you're not going to lend yourself to that idea of feeling as vulnerable as you may feel right now if you don't have a plan. So by eating, starting with a breakfast that's satiating, and following that up every three hours or so with nutritive foods and having that plan in action, you'll find when you're looking to food for emotional support, and then you can more cognitively deal with the issue rather than let it overrule your common sense. And Jamie, how many pounds did you lose? 87. Oh my. Hey Jamie, talk about a little bit about your medical issue. I started the program because I was, um, my life was being overtaken with pain from lupus. And as of last month, lupus numbers are no longer in my blood work. Unbelievable. Thank you, Jamie. Another question for Charles. Uh, are you a client also? I am a client of Charles. My name's Eric, and I've lost 56 pounds since I started working with Charles in October. It's been a real life changer. And uh, I think. Charles, I would ask you to talk about how do you, how do you know when you're ready? Because that's the, the mental mm -hmm. thing is the first step. How do you know when you're ready to get going and do this program? I think what the audience here would like to know is how to get ready. Because many people are here probably thinking about changing their life and wondering if they can. The question that you need to ask yourself is if I continue with these behaviors I'm indulging in right now, where will I be three months from now? Where will I be six months from now? Where will I be a year from now? And how will that impact a couple things? My family? my health, how will income impact my income because of the medications associated with getting sick from obesity and being overweight. So when you start to ask yourself those real questions and look at this as a responsibility rather than something that you're doing on top of what you're doing, instead look at it as what supports everything. Without health, there is nothing. So by getting your health in check and by asking yourself the consequences of the actions you're indulging in now, you can get yourself to the place to really be adherent to a program. I think we're going to uh, check in with Susanna Fuchs, uh, a friend of mine from the American Lung Association. Who, is she on the line right now? Uh, we'll get her on the line in a moment. She lost about 65 pounds with Charles, and I asked her to join us. But first, we'll get a, a, another question from the audience. Hello. Hi, I'm Johnny King. Uh, hey, Johnny. Lost my mother a couple years ago um, who struggled lifetime losing and regaining how do you can you speak to the idea of people that uh, get some momentum going and then they sabotage their efforts maybe through that sense of ego that um, maybe now I deserve a little something as a reward yes sure a lot of people reward themselves with food I mean who here in the audience just by sound of applause who here looks at food as kind of a reward I appreciate the honesty so the key is finding something that's going to give you the same intention of that behavior, so you find out why am I doing that? And for you, Johnny, it sounds like whatever your issues were, you were either calming yourself, 
trying to get yourself to a place just to slow down. When a person gorges themselves, it forces them to calm down, take a deep breath, slow themselves. Ask yourself, what else can I do that's going to give the same, that same feeling without the negative consequence? So change the behavior, but preserve the intention of the behavior. Ask yourself why you're doing it and find a better behavior to give yourself the same feeling. Uh, before we continue, is Susanna on the line right there? Uh, n not yet. Okay. Uh, hey, Willie, yeah, back yes, at the she station. Is. Uh, she yes, is on the she line. Is. Hey, uh, Susanna Fuchs from the American Lung Association. How are you today? I'm very well, thanks, Charlie. Well, uh, tell us about working out with Charles D'Angelo. Uh, Charles worked a miracle for me, for, for real. Um, I learned a different way to think about food, a different, like, a different kind of thinking about exercise, and I lost 65 pounds. Wow. It was and, great. And I, 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 see, I, I have Susanna on because uh, she lives around the corner and down the street from me, and so I see uh, uh, once we were in a room uh, at school where our kids go to school and someone turned on the air conditioning and she was just flying around. She had <laughs> no weight at all. <laughs> Sus you really – how, how difficult was it? Did, uh, didn't you crave all sorts of foods, uh, Suzanne? So much, really. Actually, you know what was pretty great about it was once I got going on eating what Charles laid out, sort of like exactly what the plan was, it was easy. I, I mean, it wasn't like easy every single minute, but in general, it was easy, and it was regular, healthy food, not like some kind of weird food that came in a package or you had to buy someplace right. special, and that made it really easy, too. And the planning, once I got used to planning ahead and bringing food with me and knowing what I was going to eat ahead of time, that, that also made it easy. And so I wouldn't say it was hard. I mean, it was difficult, but it wasn't hard. Yeah, well, 65 pounds later. Thanks for uh, joining us, Susanna Fuchs. Really appreciate it. Uh, Kim, do you want to join us and share your thoughts? Uh, do you mind? Because uh, uh, you've been kind of shy and retiring over there. Come, on. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Kim Tucci. Kim Tucci is in the house. He, uh, the, the owner of the pasta house, is here at Kimol's. Well, tell us a little something. Oh, you gave him a microphone. What are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, hey, Charlie, oh. if you want to sit down. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> I won't be needed. I guarantee you that. This will be a this will be a marathon raising money for charity here. Uh, tell us, Kim, did you lose some weight with Charles D'Angelo? Yeah, I lost uh, 48 pounds so far. Congratulations, Kim. And uh, I did something. I went to Schnooks one day, and I told Charles about it, but he already, he already published the book. It's always in print, but I thought it was a good example. I walked down the aisle, and there was I went by the sugar uh, aisle, and I picked up three five-pound bags of sugar. Now, I could put the three five-pound bags on one arm. So a lady was walking down with her cart, and I said, ma'am, could you help me? And she said, what? I said, well, you pick up those five-pound bags of sugar, put the other three in my arm. So I could hold 30 pounds of sugar. I couldn't get the other three five-pound bags for the weight that I had lost, because I lost almost 48 pounds then. And I just held those 30 pounds, and that was still not the extra 15 pounds that I was, was, had lost. And I'm thinking... I've been carrying this around for so long, and um, my wife, uh, Sharon, who's sitting up here, she was on me constantly, just, I mean, it was unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, Charles told me when I went in there the first day, he said, you're going to lose 40 to 50 pounds, and your wife's going to get off your head. Let's not use that okay. language here, Kim. Let's keep <laughs> it to my office. <laughs> but anyway, that was, uh, it's terrific. And uh, Charles... Um, he entertains me, too. I like going there. Uh, he has a passion to help you. It's, uh, I don't think, if anything is being a commercial enterprise or anything like that, he really wants to help people. He's helped me. I feel better, and I'll tell you, he told me to go somewhere yesterday, and I did. He doesn't know that I went yesterday. I saw my sleep apnea doctor, and I told him that uh, my weight loss coach told me that I should be retested, and he saw the weight that I lost from the last visit, and he said, you're going to be retested February 8th. So I think I've eliminated the sleep apnea. No more mask. No more snoring. Sleeping better. <laughs> no more nosebleeds. It's just been terrific. Kim Tucci, congratulations. congratulations. Kim. 
And I just want to add one thing about sugar. Every, something some, everybody can do here today is I want to let you know that if you're drinking regular soda or any caloric beverages, reconstituted fruit juice, any of that, a 12-ounce so, so, serving of soda, regular soda, has 10 teaspoons of sugar in it. So imagine taking a 12-ounce glass of water and putting 10 teaspoons of sugar in it and drinking that several times a day. So if you're sitting out here or you're listening in your car now and you want to take massive action today, eliminate all caloric beverages from your diet and watch how your weight responds. And what else is on the forbidden list? Before we get back to the phone. Fried foods. Keep all fried foods out. I would say that you don't really want to look at foods as forbidden, but rather you want to look at them as something you respect. And if you're going to have some of those things, they need to be very, very much controlled. And they would be nachos, french fries, cake, Fried cookies. foods, donuts, yeah. of course, yeah. being mm -hmm. fried. A lot of things that are, again, the key is these people want to lose weight, and they want something so fast, they get down on themselves, they have a couple of Big Macs, they feel bad about having that, they feel bad they're not losing weight, and they get in this, what I call, defeat whirlpool. And all of a sudden, they're being sucked down, 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 feeling that they can't get out. You have to just cut that. You've got to step out of it. And many people have been in this whirlpool for so long, their skin's starting to get a little wrinkled, if you know what I mean. Mm. It's time to step out. It's time to take action and make this something that you must do. Not something you should, but you must. Let's go to uh, Mike Kelly, who's half of Hancock and Kelly on Michael. Cable, who is uh, on the line, I think. Are, are you out there, Mike? Hey. Hey, yes, Michael. Good afternoon or good morning. Good morning, Charlie and Charles. Uh, <laughs> I uh, just got off the treadmill and uh, ate my protein shake or drank my protein shake already. I, uh, I have to echo Kim Tucci. I, um, I met Charles three years ago uh, uh, from a friend, and he helped me lose 40, 40 plus pounds at that time. Wow. And uh, I've continued to see Charles. And uh, what you're going to love about Charles is it's, it's, not, it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle change that Charles brings to you. And his motivation that he gave me is, uh, has helped me become a healthier person. And uh, I, 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 I mean, I love this guy. I'd do but, anything but for Michael, Charles D'Angelo. He changed Michael. my life. Does it give you enough energy to combat John Hancock? Well, there's never enough energy to deal with Hancock when you're dealing with somebody who has such irrational thoughts. <laughs> okay. Um, it, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> hey, Mike, thanks for joining us today. Get back on that treadmill. All Thank right. you, buddy. Thank All you, right. Mike Kelly, ladies and gentlemen. Very good. All right. Hey, Charles, we got about a minute to go. Then we'll be signing books. You have a website. I do. It's charlesdangelo.com. And if people want to go get the book online, they can get it at amazon.com. Or they can just go out to Barnes & Noble and ask for Think and Grow Thin. It's available all across the country now. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us for this edition of Great Speeches of the Day. Uh, <laughs> you did a great job. You really did. Charlie, thank you so much for having <laughs> okay. us. Charles D'Angelo. Great man. Charlie Brennan, okay. everyone. <laughs>